the garden. I love the quote unquote anything. Hmm. The rescue mission. Duh. Uh, hmm. Let's start heading down towards there. You find an abandoned crate before all dead uh, on the side. Maybe the shipper said it wasn't worth the effort, considering. You pry the lid off the crate and help yourself to the contents. Cannot let taxpayer-funded material go to waste. That is the correct spelling of material. Um, it's not the word material, like how cloth is a material you make clothes out of. Material in this spelling, in this context, means military supplies. That's why anti-material rifle is spelled like that. Because it is a rifle meant to shoot military supplies, usually like a tank. Incendiary bullet and a silver bullet. Let's get back on the trail, soldier. I found it like right here as well, so I guess that's pretty uh, accurate. Sets an enemy on fire and deals damage to cows and other demonic creatures. Gosh, real life numb. Uh, yeah, I'm Sister Tabitha. I'm Arizona Tex. What's with the cots? Well, with the cow attacks, I felt my faith would be better served running this place as a clinic rather than just a church. I also sell medical supplies if you'd like your healing go-to. Can I buy some? You're not sure which is stranger, that these work or that they only work on legs. Uh, 10 HP. Increases maximum HP. That's not bad. Laudanum. The tincture of opium is widely lauded as a super great thing that's great to use all of the time. <laughs> Do you need any errands run? Funny you should ask. I've been experimenting with the healing properties of a purple grass that grows near here, but I've run out. When you mind picking some, it grows near a cave that makes an unusual humming sound. Yeah, I've just decided to play this game in the way that I would. I kind of tried to see as much... I need lockpicking for this, so... Um, I tried to see as much of Kingdom of Loathing as I could, because it was like a... The, the, the nature of the game being a thing where, like, that snake ain't gonna let you pass without a struggle. The nature of the game being a thing where, like, um... Okay, I'm fighting one guy, so debuffing him would probably be great. Uh... And let's make sure that I don't even need to deal with him this round. And the next round we can just set up more damage on him. Hmm, not a lot of damage there. Luckily, we actually got a bunch of stuff done for Susie Cochran here. So as a result, we now have a great deal of uh, bonus rifle damage. Ah, oh, he's on that magic pixel. You put an end to the shocking tale of the shock and snake. Snake venom bladders, two of them, and an electric snake skin. Oh yeah, with our skin and knife. Which means that we can actually put this on our barely enchanted hat. But I will wait until I find a new hat, and that hat will be my go-to. What is that thing? Oh, this is the Fava Mexico... Uh, it has a pity name. I remember reading about it. The monolith is dark. A huge cave at some point. Strange stone arrow. Triangular object made out of a strange stone-like material, shot through with channels of smooth black glass. Neat. Looks like a cave in at some point. I forget what it is. It has like some sort of like interesting, fun, pithy name. Oh yeah, aren't I looking for purple grass? Right. Uh, purple grass has medicinal qualities, according to that. Uh, none at the mission way north of dirt water. Let's give these guys a shot, huh? Because maybe I can do it now. Sorry about that. Beg your pardon. Excuse me. Coming through. Oh yeah, we have stink, uh, uh, stink protection now. Old patrol cap. Pistol attack damage. Style cap the enemy used to issue to soldiers, but it doesn't anymore. Some decades hence, it'll be lost to history and then reinvented from scratch. That's kind of funny. 
Uh, we can ignore it. All right, let's give these guys another shot now. You've got crazy high stats, bro. All right. Now, theoretically... We could be able to just use this to block him. Yeah, this does more damage. And now use your big gun. Cool. Now we can just machine gun him out. Just work him. All right, cool. Smell insults. All right, cool. Where did I? Lazy A Dude Ranch, right. Let's check it out. Why not? The professor. Right, we need this guy, actually. What? Oh, I didn't notice you come in. I'm not used to visitors, but folks generally call me the professor. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I found this bleeping gizmo, and I sort of followed the bleeping, and it led me here. El Vibrato, that's what it is. Well, I'll be certainly ready to let the place, young man. This is El Vibrato technology, and I happen to be as much of an expert as anyone alive today. El Vibrato, ancient race that lived here long before humans. Well, they mostly live underground, so they might still be living, as far as I know. Never seen a people with an actual person, though. Just the machines they left behind. Were they space aliens? Could be humans or genius. It could be aliens, genius, be humans, or an entirely different terrestrial evolutionary line. At this stage of investigation, it's impossible to say. Let me have a look at your bleep and gizmo. As I suspected, this is one of their transponders. It detects other uh, El Vibrato technology and homes in, you see. Oh, it homes in on them, you see. That'll be why I led you here. I've got a thing I've been trying to repair. He tinks around with a transponder and plugs a strange stone marble into a socket. There you go, good as new. Just swipe up or down to turn it on or off. Swipe. I gotta warn you, this device will lead you to abandon El Vibrato technology, but it might also attract unwanted attention from the El Vibrato technology. You'll see what I mean, just be careful. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, you've arrived at a perfect time. In order to get anywhere further with my research, I need more samples of El Vibrato tech, but searching eats up all the time I could be using to research it. I get you. Right? You're the adventurous type. So bring back whatever devices you find. If I can get them up and running, that'll benefit both of us. First priority would be to get this Keystone Fabricator running. They lock their doors in these things with little stone alloy blocks, so if we can make our own, that'll open a lot of doors for us, literally and figuratively. The components aren't rare, uh, at least as far as prices and technology goes. Bring me uh, five handfuls of scrap. Should be able to salvage the last parts I need from that. Roger. Uh, spooky action at a distance. You don't trust it. Do you want to shut that down? No, I will leave it on. Um, so, basically how this works is now we will just randomly get um, random encounters. These books are so boring, it's a one of the shelf isn't full of holes. The microscopic mites that live in your eyelashes are getting along fine. I love that we're getting one additional XP every time we flush it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get one more like, El Vibrato device. Or no, how does it work? We're going to get one more... We're going to get more encounters now. We're going to get unique encounters that come from uh, the El Vibrato stuff. Um, while that's on, and they'll be difficult. But we'll also be able to find more of it ourselves. And that's a way to upgrade your character. Um, another thing is that... Um, these things, the Tex... Next Max. This is Necromantic Magic. Um, and a lot of your party members actually won't like it. I was kind of thinking about going for it, but I actually don't know if Susie Cochran will like it. I know that one of one of the people just really hates it. Because, like, her family was killed by zombies. Um, so it's a... Uh, it's a definitive, like, trigger for her that she'll, you know, attack you. Or I think she'll leave you, actually. Um, and I also know that Gary the Goblin won't ditch you if you use this. Uh, I 
don't know about anything else. I think it might also give you the bad ending. I don't quote me on that though. Um, let's see if you've got any more XP to throw on something. Let's just round those out. Catch them up a little. And while we're here, let's grab some more outfoxing. Let's put it on, Mysticality. All right. Uh, now let's go back to where I was heading, which is the Lazy A Dude Ranch. Bucephalus takes a weird turn. You find yourself surrounded by old dead trees. Where are you? Gray mist closes on you as Bucephalus marches confidently forward through the gnarled and ancient forest. You shudder. The, through the fog ahead, you see this shape. You dismount to investigate, and it's a pedestal top of the book. Fundamentals of Next Max. Really thinking about it. It might really hurt me in the long run. Let's leave it alone. It might hurt me in the long run. But maybe at the end of the game, I'll just read every single book. You, with the hat. Yes. Barter's like commerce, man, except natural. Can you dig it? Strange head sack. Groovy. Muscle. Not really worth it. Hmm. I want to find a good brand new hat. Also, what happens if I go back here? Can I fight more skeletons? I love these old cannons, man. Nope. Looks empty in here. Alright. Uh, the old millinery. Oh, actually. A circus. Right, yeah. Circus. Before we go here, let's go to the rescue mission. We'll speak to it. A rustling sound in the bushes draws your attention and you decide to investigate because that's what investigator, adventurers do no matter how bad of an idea it'll turn out to be. The rustling is a goblin, a goblin wearing uh, clown makeup and practicing their cartwheels and mostly failing. Eventually they give up on a tumbling practice and repeatedly throw a shiny, shiny metal ball into the air and catch it. Uh, wow, uh, hello? Hello, hi. What you two doing? I am two learning a juggle. He tosses a single ball into the air again, but distracted by the conversation misses the catch. Why? A clown becoming. Joining the circus. Far away to traveling. Far, far away. Uh, to traveling and then to popping. Popping? No, never mind. I'll jump him. Whatever. I hate clowns. Damn. We're fighting one target, so if we debuff him, he'll have a lot less going on. Let's wrap him. Popping in this world is what happens when a goblin reaches the end of its life cycle. Um, since they're made of spores and all. Nice. Damn. Wow, he's lighting me up. Luckily, got a shiny ball and a goblin sandwich. Another weird clown is the last thing this world needs. Too right. Mysticality, but, hmm, that's not really worth it. Moxie, this one is muscle and moxie and spell damage. Oh yeah, we have these as well. Here's your purple grass. Wonderful, thank you very much. Blessings upon you. Do I need anything else? No. Cool. That uh, plus five health is only useful if... um. Sorry, I'm trying to think of nothing's happening. It's only useful if... um, Or plus ten health, even. It's only useful if we're losing less than five health a turn. Come across a goblin marching around the woods. They're taller than a typical goblin because their boots are taller than typical goblin boots. In fact, these boots are so tall they must be half stuffed with socks to keep the tops from jamming the goblin in the groin. <laughs> uh, the goblin sees you and marches over, attempting to look intimidating instead of awkward. Hey, hey human, what are you doing in this place? This is my ground to stomping. Do you mean your stomping grounds? What? 
your boots, which are very tall, I am seeing. Yes, tall boots to having, also so tall am I. Um, that's cool, but they are uncomfortable seeming very. I to having no sensation in my feet now, so this is fine. Jump them. Damn. Bust out the old reliable. 30 damage. God damn it. Well, we'll be sure to at least get one of those. This guy hates being shot, I'm noticing. Whiff. Come on. Damn. When did I get another action point? Alright, Harry, but... Alright. You gave that goblin the boot and took away his boots. We got a guffin. Increases your nothing by zero for the rest of the day. Great. We have the jack boots now. Gives us muscle. No wonder he was kicking our ass so hard. Hmm... Hmm. Think, think, think. Did I do here enough? You have a run-in with the worst smelling snake you've ever seen. It's basically a cartoon stink line come to life. Ooh. Uh. Yeah, I got two action points now. It would be a waste of that one muscle if I debuffed him by an additional five. So let's cook him. There are five elements in um, loathing. Stench, hot, cold. Stench, hot, cold, spooky, which is purple. And then there's a gray one? Because I think cold damage is blue. Snake Spleen. You will like not to keep the, spl uh, the skin from this one. You walk into the millinery and five five bandits lounging around on big piles of half-made hats. It's lost. Skedaddle. They scatter like cockroaches, shutting themselves behind a different door. You have to wrangle them individually. Brims. So many brims in a little time. Jacques. <laughs> he unceremoniously dumps you outside and walks back in that dusting their hands off gesture like in a cartoon. Oh no, he's back. Black hat. Jacques. I love Jacques. That's funny. Dense. You don't know much about hat making, but it don't make much sense. I'm looking for a hat that's dented in the wrong way. Creep, crappy chapeau. Hmm. This is kind of clever, actually. I like this. Liners. Given the quality of the one-liners around here, you don't need multiple. Oh, I see a different hat. Oh. I saw you wiggle. You fool. Bandit you caught. This is fun. I like this. Swatches. Squatches? Squatches. Hmm. Not sure I, I like it as much if the puzzle is just wait and watch for them to wiggle. But if it's a spot the difference, then that's kind of cool. God, this game's so black and white, it's starting to blur my eyes a little. I, I'm, I am still adapting to my new glasses. Oh, 
Oh, I thought this hat had a different brim. Brims, brims, brims. Even more brims. What was different about that hat? Oh, and they untie the friends. Damn. Sigh. Actually, this might be good to do off camera, just if I'm going to have to grind it out. Um, I know that I've been editing these episodes, but so I don't do like a proper sign in, sign off. But I'll see you guys later. I've been Alfred. This has been West of Loathing. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. I'll see you guys later. Bye.